This is an example of how to lay out the Silva cell in your site plan using AutoCAD. In this example, we are working with a streetscape, but the principles can be applied to most of your other sites, plazas, parking lots. You really um, can use the Silva cells in most paved situations other than in heavy traffic drive lanes. So our site plan is already basically set up, but if you're starting from scratch, you need to include any of the infrastructure that might be impacted by the Silva cells. So this would be the utilities, curbs, buildings, light pole, footings, other footings, um, and of course the tree openings. In this case, we are working with a four foot tree opening and the trees are 38 feet on center. So we're assuming that we are using a concrete sidewalk. That is our thinnest pavement section. And we're going to use a three frame deep silva cell system. So based on this section, we can refer to the layout guidelines document which is available on the Deep Root website, and we can determine what the standard curb setback should be. In this case, we need a 2.375 foot setback from the back of curb. So this is basically just to ensure that your, your curb isn't going to be negatively impacted by the Silva Cell system. You've got enough space here to backfill adequately to make sure that that curb stays intact. So I've got my curb set back in. So this gives us an easy spot to start laying out the cells. We've got the edge of the tree opening and our limits of the system. So I'm going to insert our Silva cell block. We have a number of blocks set up based on your units that you're using. In this case I'm using feet. So this is our Silva cell block. So we've had this set up. So this is it should come into scale if if the units are working correctly together. It should come in at about 2 feet by 4 feet, or 600 millimeters by 1200 millimeters. We've also included our standard spacing between cells. In this case, we're showing a 1 inch and a 3 inch, which is our standard spacing between the cells, and they can really work anywhere within that range, 1 inch or 25 millimeters to 3 inches or 75 millimeters. We've also included the 1 and a half inch line to use it as an example. Um, we, that's an easy construction line um, because you can use a 2 by 4 on its edge as an easy spacer. So I can see that I'm already going to need to shift this back in order to meet our curb setback. So I'm going to assume this is a concrete curb that's around the tree opening. So I want to make sure that the Silva cell is beneath that curb to adequately support it. So I'm going to copy a few Silva cells here. I'm going to connect up the two closest trees. We like to provide a shared soil volume, if at all possible, um, so you're really maximizing the use of the system because two trees can benefit from one group. But there, there are a lot of different options when you actually go to lay it out. So that one worked out pretty well. Um, 
I was just laying that out as an example because sometimes we'll need to shift the overall group spacing. Here I use the one and a half inch spacing. Um, sometimes that will need to shift in order to get back over and support this curve. But we're pretty close here, so I'm just going to shift a few of these up to the three inch spacing. And really a lot of this gets adjusted in the field. So that actually looks pretty good. So we're supporting the curb on this side and we're supporting the curb on this side. I'm also going to copy a few of the cells to the other side of the tree opening. So that we're providing rooting on each side. We want that to kind of be balanced out a little bit. And then we need to support the tree on this side as well. Or not really support the tree, support the curb. So I'm going to copy a cell over here and rotate this 90 degrees. The silver cells are typically used parallel or perpendicular to each other. Um, as long as you're maintaining your one to three inch spacing, um, it's not it's not critical that it be an even one inch all the way across. Um, if you're working on a curve, sometimes you'll need to skew that line a little bit um, and kind of flare out the spacing. Um, so we're too close on this end because this is our one inch spacer. So I'm actually just going to shift over this group slightly so that we have our one inch spacing. So we have a one inch spacing here, one inch spacing here, and we're still supporting the curb on this side. I'm going to copy another one down to the other tree. shift this group slightly to keep our one inch spacing. So I'm also going to, depending on your soil volume goals, um, you're going to have a certain number of silva cells to meet those soil volumes. Um, in this case I don't have a specific goal in mind, but you know, if we could get to, let's say, let's say our goal is to get to 750 cubic feet um, per tree. So I'm guessing that this is going to take another row of cells. So I'm just going to place in another row above. We are using a three frame gate system. So that minimizes the actual footprint, um, the actual size of the excavation in order to meet that soil volume. And again, depending on your project goals, um, you're going to, if it's goals for stormwater or for goals for soil volumes, it's dependent on your um, tree species you've selected for your site. There's a number of factors that go into that. So I need to, there's a little bit of a gap here. So I need to shift this top row of cells just a little bit. And again, I'm at my one and a half inch spacing so I can increase these to three. To get me closer in. And we have included in the standard set of details that are available on the Deep Root website we have included some minor gap bridging details, but generally we like to shift the cell layout to eliminate as many of those gaps as possible. We want to make sure that the pavement is all equally supported. Okay, so we have our silo cells laid out. Um, now there is going to be a geogrid that wraps around the whole system and that's what it's backfilled up against. So we want to try to keep it kind of as even an edge as possible. So this should be a pretty pretty easy one to install. 
So the beautiful thing about setting up the Silva cell this way as a block is that it's the only thing that is a block in my drawing here that I have selected. So in CAD you can really easily go into your properties dialog box and it tells you how many blocks you have selected. So in this case we've drawn in 38 Silva cells so that actually means the Silva cell deck because that's the part that's in plan is what you're seeing. So if we have 38 decks and we're three frames deep, we're providing 114 total Silva cell frames. And each of those frames holds 10 cubic feet of soil or 0.28 cubic meters of soil. So we are talking about 1140 cubic feet for these two trees or about 32 cubic meters. So that's 16 cubic meters per tree or about 570 cubic feet per tree. So de again, depending on your goals for your site, you may want to add in another row of cells um, in order to get you to your soil volumes. Um, we had said that we, we were shooting for 750 cubic feet and we're at 570. So we might just add in um, another row of cells above here. Again, it's dependent on you know what your restrictions are as far as you know maybe there's a light pole on this corner, or you have uh, main utility coming through here, and that's going to limit the space that you have to put in the silva cells. Um, so you're going to just shift this to make it work for your site and for your soil volume goals. So this is the example of the Silva cell layout in AutoCAD. We have more information available on the DeepRoot website and we've included our contact information at the end of this video. Please feel free to contact us if you have any questions and we're very happy to help review any of the layouts that you've try it on your own and we can give you some tips um, for making them efficient and making sure that your details are including all the necessary components of the Silva Cell system. So thank you very much and good luck with your project.